The step for this mod is to get the LCD off. We use some hot air to do that, and like so, it's gone. And the next, we need to remove nine resistors on the Game Gear motherboard. So we'll go ahead and we'll go around the board and remove all of those. So as you can see, I'm just applying heat and solder to get them off the best I can. Little fiddly, but nothing too too complex. So there we go. Um, there's also this transistor here. We'll get rid of that with hot air. And I use hot air where I can. I just avoid it in areas that have plastic. As we can see, stuff just pops right off. It's nice and easy. So we'll just go around the board and remove these capacitors that aren't needed anymore and resistors. Sorry, the resistors, not capacitors by mistake. Um, yeah. So it's just a case of remove all of the components on the checklist. Next up, we're going to remove um, a couple of transistors on the LCD side of the board. Just get some heat on those with flux. It's a bit of a struggle. If we add some extra solder though, it should help get it off. As we can see, those clear spots underneath those transistors were where adhesive was. That's why those were so difficult to remove. So we'll just clean up that site now with some desoldering wick. We don't necessarily have to, but I like to clean up after myself. And we'll do the same where I remove the, re uh, the resistors on the other side of the board. And there we go. So just clean up all those pads and it, it it's not necessary but I just like to do it it makes for a cleaner job and um, yeah you see we've got some nice clean pads left behind and that's that so now we add some fresh solder to um, where the backlight fluorescent tube is now we use desoldering gun to remove that backlight tube. And that should just sort of wiggle off if we've done it correctly. We've got that removed now. Um, next up, there's a whole bunch of uh, high voltage capacitors for the, um, for the transformer that's on this board. That was what used to drive the uh, fluorescent tube, so we get rid of that. There we go, as we can see, that's a nice clean job. We'll get rid of those fuses that were for the uh, bulb as well don't need those anymore and that's it those are gone so we just hook up the power board flip it over and while I'm at it I'm gonna just clean up this area of, uh, of any mess and um, I'm just gonna clean up these uh, data line connectors where the uh, ribbon cable for the old LCD was with some IPA and uh, desoldering wick as we just saw um, now I run down the line, get rid of the excess old solder, and uh, we'll now tin these all up with some fresh solder, use a bit of flux to help that flow. There we go. Get that cleaned off of IPA now to get rid of the flux. So clean around the board. There we go, looking good. And what we're doing here is uh, along the power connector, it was being a little bit finicky, so I just put fresh solder in. I think there might have been some old cold solder joints there. So we're just putting fresh stuff on to make sure that connector's nice and well electrically connected. So just run down that line, add fresh solder, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Looking good. So we just clean that area now with some more IPA, get that, old, get that fresh flux that we put on off. And now we do a 5 volt check, make sure we're getting 5 volt out, and we are, so that's good. It means we haven't botched this install so far, and now um, we'll just give the board a quick clean in IPA, just submerge the whole thing. I like to clean as I go, it keeps the boards nice and flux residue free and so on. This is something I'll have to do again later, and I, um, I will demonstrate that, but yeah. So. The next thing now, we're um, we're just applying, uh, we're, we're just installing a bunch of data line wires for the uh, for the mod board. As you can see, I'm just sort of um, going around soldering the cables into where they need to be. These particular ones, the button ones, those allow us to switch render modes, which is pretty cool. So yeah. that's another install 
and yeah, we just keep going around this uh, this mod board, adding what data lines we need. So again, we're just sort of pre-tinning all of the points. I'm just adding a, a sort of liberal amount of solder there, makes connecting the wires a little bit easier. So this wire for the GG SMS, that's for Game Gear Sega Master System support, and that gets uh, soldered onto the other side of the board, onto one of the cartridge pins. And the clock needs to go to a point where it can access the XTAL oscillator crystal, which we can actually see on the microscope view there next to FB1. It's that large silver thing. Um, we also need to uh, bridge T10 to T11, I believe that was. So yeah got to get a wire on that so you know it's just a case of uh, soldering the wires into the locations they need to be so as we can see we've soldered T10 and that's going to T11 what I'm doing is I'm just being careful with how I maneuver that in so I don't bridge it to C77 it should be all right but I think that looks pretty good um, yeah we just go around this board following that checklist as we need to and that's it really so that's the XTAL cable wired up correctly See, I'm just sort of tweaking this cable a little bit. I'm trying to get it to do a nice, precise length. And I actually use a soldering tip to remove some of that insulation. It's just to make sure we get the exact right length. There we go. That's that's being soldered in now. There we go. That's the uh, timer hooked up for the clock. And we just got to put that onto the mod board now. And there we go, that's soldered. As we can see, that's quite neat as well. That looks good. And I'm just sort of removing the excess cable we don't need as well while I'm doing that. So now we flip to the other side of the board. And um, this is for the SMS um, uh, select cable. Yeah, it is. I think. I could be wrong, actually. I'm not sure. Um, we also need to hook up uh, VCC and ground. I think this is the VCC. And, um, you know, I just try to be as neat as possible with these cables as well. Here we're supposed to hook up, pretty sure this is the ground. I actually bridged this to a um, pin I shouldn't have done. Uh, it takes me a little while to diagnose that problem later on. I just accidentally created a short where there shouldn't have been one. It was easy to repair. It was just remove it and put it on the correct two pins. Well, really, I only needed one pin, but I used two. It doesn't really matter. And, um, yeah, here we're going to solder the um, the button wires up to the, the correct points on the board, which are um, basically being soldered to capacitors. So as you can see, I'm just bending that into shape, put a bit of flux on the old solder, put some fresh on there, and then feed the cable in with some heat. And it's a little fiddly. It's a little fiddly to get right, but there we go. As you can see, you know, it just takes a bit of maneuvering around. And again, it's another cable I'm stripping with heat. But there we go. It just keeps things nice and neat on the board. And again, it's just the same process for the other buttons that we're wiring up that allow us to switch different display modes on the Game Gear mod. There we go. And I think this is the final cable now. So we'll run that through that leg. That's just to sort of keep the routing clear. We'll run it through a different leg, actually. It just helps guide where it is. It doesn't matter. It's not going to cause any harm or anything. I just try to keep the cable routing a little bit neat. And just clip off the excess of that cable. A little bit of flux. Fresh solder and just again make that electrical connection nicely. So now I'm just inspecting the handiwork and now we come back to it. So um, the next thing we want to do here is wire up the brightness control, which is what we're doing there. We wire it to pin one and two of the potentiometer on the Game Gear board. 
And there we go. That's the brightness control wheel now wired up to the board. That allows us to control the LCD brightness, which is pretty cool. Now, these are the data lines. These are actually a bit of a bugger to solder. Um, you have to count down, get the correct pins and so on. And you know, you, you've just got to be careful. There we go. That's soldered in. And it's just a case of making sure that we don't bridge any of these connections to the neighbors, the, the pins neighboring them. And uh, we just make sure we get a nice electrical contact. Let me go down this line and just clean everything up as we go. So that's the next one. There's six of these in total, and I take that knife and just remove the excess cable that wasn't needed. We add a bit of extra solder to that because it didn't want to grip. And check it with the tweezers to make sure it's nice and mechanically sound, and then we continue down the line and just solder in each necessary connector. This is essentially connecting the actual LCD to the LCD contacts on this board. So, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that in shot for these ones, but um, it's exactly the same process. It's a big checklist that tells you exactly where they need to go. And there we go, that's the next one. Just get some IPA on there and clean up the flux residue mess. down that line and clean it all up nicely. I use just some hot air to evaporate the IPA just that little bit quicker. It will evaporate on its own, but if you set the uh, hot air station to about 100 degrees and hold it a bit further away from the board so as not to overheat anything, it just evaporates the alcohol super quick. Uh, it just accelerates the process. So the next thing I do, and there are various ways you can do this, I like to feed these cables up through the bottom of the cartridge slot. It keeps them nice and clean and out of the way. It means you're not routing them across the front of the board. You can keep everything at the back. And as we can see, I'm just wiring each one individually as needed. So I snip it to length, strip it down using the soldering iron to get the um, insulator off of the Kynar wire. And it's just a case of once it's the right length solder it in and we just rinse and repeat for all of these i've done three of these mods now i'm getting better at it this is probably my neatest install so far and uh, a lovely chap from ebay's purchased this from me because i'm selling them on ebay um yeah i've got another that's going to go up soon as well for sale there's a little bit of repair I need to do on the power board of the other one, though. But anyway, that's largely inconsequential. But yeah, we just go around, we add flux, we make sure all of the cables are nicely connected and sort of neat, keeping them sort of lined up as well, which is nice. Sort of stripping off the uh, excess melt there with the uh, tweezers, and we'll just get that soldered in. There we go. last data line wired in so we're looking good so now we just go down the board and remove any uh, XX blocks with IPA and that just evaporate it using the hot air gun trick same on the other side and now I'm just removing this caps on tape to put some fresh stuff on the IPA had dissolved a bit of the adhesive so I wanted some fresh stuff on there so that you know it, it now it's time to do some testing so we put that power board back in we power on and each time I power it on I notice I get a flash on the backlight but nothing so I go through some diagnostic procedures I know these ribbon cables can be temperamental when you first connect them so as you can see I'm just sort of tweaking that to see if that's the problem and reseating the game and so on I'm essentially going through a debug process now I'm trying to figure out exactly why that display switches off so quickly uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I did short circuit two pins that I shouldn't have short circuited on that cartridge slot. I'm not sure if you see me correct that, but I do. I desolder the cable and solder it on the correct pins instead. I don't think I captured it on video. What I do here though is I connect up the soundboard remove the LCD and just see if I get any sound output and I don't and when you don't get sound output that means there is a problem somewhere 
So I inspected the board with the microscope and I got it running at this point. As you can see, we just had some output, but the display was a wrong color. And there we go. Now it's the correct color. I'm testing it with um, sound. I didn't capture the sound, unfortunately. But there we go. Now it's a case of let's get the machine reassembled. So, you know, I'll just reposition the speaker in there. I'll use some fr uh, fresh adhesive to secure that um, speaker into the shell. And now let's remove that old display cover because it's a bit scratched up and old. And um, I replaced that with a nice, a nice glass one, which looks a lot better. It makes the screen look a lot more crisp and nice to look at. So it's just a case of use some IPA to dissolve the old adhesive and push the old display out. And as we can see here, it's been cleaned up and now we uh, insert this new um, glass fascia. It's kind of tricky to get these aligned perfectly. They're not manufactured exactly to the correct shape of the game gear. They're very close, but it takes quite a while to get them seated in correctly. So. Now that we've got that done, we uh, go ahead and reassemble it by putting all of the uh, motherboard screws back in. And um, just go around the board, route that cable back where it belongs. Uh, the guide does mention that you need to remove these metal clips on this uh, cartridge slot RF shield thing. So I'm just going ahead and doing that with a pair of uh, wire strippers, uh, wire snips, even flush cuts. So, yeah, we're just get rid of those get them out of the way it takes me a little while because it's a lot of rocking it back and forth and so on and so now things are happening off camera I can't remember what I was actually doing at this point I was probably inspecting something or cleaning something but there we go so now we uh, we put the original daughter boards back in that we've put new capacitors on I used some Tessa tape to reattach this uh, black shield thing, and that's now in position and nice and secure. So we take these daughter board screws and just secure in the boards. As you can see, that board there has been recapped as well. I use audio grade capacitors on those audio boards too. It just ensures that we get decent sound out, and now it's just a case of securing everything back in. And now we can connect it all up. As we can see, everything's going nicely, and uh, just, you know, screw everything back in on the shell. So that's the shell, more or less reassembled now, let's just pull the screws in. And uh, I did notice a bit of corrosion on one of the contacts, so I cleaned that up. I did a bit of scraping, and then I applied a little bit of white vinegar just to get rid of any alkaline residue. And uh, although I didn't capture it, I also sanded it down to get it a little bit better, just to make sure that batteries always make correct contact and that we do get power out. So now it's the uh, it's the test. Power on. And as we can see, we've got display out. It says Sega. And unfortunately, again, I didn't capture sound on this video, so you can't hear it, but there is sound there. Uh, it's just testing the backlight wheel. And as we can see, the screen's getting dimmer and brighter. Apologies for the positioning of uh, my hands and the camera. There we go. As we can see, that screen looks fantastic too. It really is a nice looking screen. Absolutely brilliant. I love these mods. They look great. So there you have it, guys. That is the successful modification of a Sega Game Gear LCD display. Um... I really think it's a fantastic modification to do because it doesn't really change the uh, original feel of the Game Gear and you're still playing it on original hardware. Some people, um, not everybody, but some people prefer to have no modifications at all to the hardware. I think this is a modification that is a must-have for anybody. I really, really strongly recommend it. It looks absolutely fantastic. It is a brilliant way to play your old back catalogue of games on your Sega Game Gear. And one of the really, really nice things about it as well is it does save a little bit of power on um, on battery usage as well, which is another really nice plus of the mod. So not only does it look fantastic as a display, 
it saves your batteries a bit and that's always good because Sega Game Gear was an absolute beast when it came to batteries. It just ate through them like there was no end of it. Well guys, we're going to leave it here for this video. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked it, leave me a thumbs up. I'll catch you guys in the next video and bye for now. Thank you.